wrap up with Miss, Miss Kelly right here. Oh, you left him hanging. <laughs> oh, I didn't know he <laughs> wanted a high five. <laughs> I, I thought he was just gesturing towards me. <laughs> caused so much social anxiety for a yes. long time. I mean, it was, there was a period where I didn't leave the house for like eight months because I wasn't sure how to handle it because everywhere you go. All right, we are back on Becker's Back Terrain. We got Janet Nicole Becker and Valeria Becker. Looks like Valeria Becker is back. You can feel better. I am feeling better. I am still not 100%, but I'm so much closer. It's been three weeks since you've been on the pod, Has Mom. it been that long? Well, because you were sick, yeah. and then we... And we were, I was out of town. You were out of I town. I was out of town first, then I was sick. Yeah. 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 So it's been like almost three weeks worth of episodes Well, I missed you, we you so... Although I do see you outside of the podcast studio. No. <laughs> she has. Yeah. She has. <laughs> we have an exciting episode today. We have our friend Kelly Mano on later. I know. Kelly Mano. We had such a fun combo Mello. with Kelly. I'm so sad I missed it. And I did confirm with my bestie, Katie G., she is a huge Kelly Mano fan. Really? That's yes, awesome. I love that. Well, if Katie G. Well, just podcast. I meant to say something about that because I know you had mentioned it. But we, Kelly is a big uh, Gen X representative of yes. the Gen X. She is on the younger end of the Gen X years, and Katie G and I are on the tip of those. That's okay. You're <laughs> but still But we Gen are not I boomers. You're, you're <laughs> by, d- by definition, you are still Gen X. Yes, we are. So, but, but yeah. I'm super excited to hear that. She is a lovely, lovely human, and she is hysterical. She's very funny. But we'll have to have you back on because we we talked a little bit about the Gen X stuff, but I feel like we need to do a little bit of a deeper dive. But we just didn't get there. We had a lot of other things to talk about. And since you weren't here, I felt like if we weren't going to do a deep dive, that was okay because we'll have her on again, and then you and her should really oh, I can't even enjoy imagine. That, that conversation. Well, well, I can't wait for that. But before we get to Kelly, we've got a couple of things. Yeah, we do have a couple of things. Starting with, with it, next week, when this pop- podcast comes out, my birthday w- will be here. So, I got a little... little something, uh, something. little something, something. I got a birthday card. Really? And it gives you who to. I from <laughs> it, it is from the Albert Pool Host <coughs> Wellness Center for Adults with Down Syndrome. They sent a birthday card to me, and 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 I, I really really thankful. So, you want to do a I would read be set? I would be delighted to read this for you. It says, "We would like to wish you a very special happy birthday. You deserve a day that is all about you." And that is the way it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> All about me. I think Derek thinks he deserves a whole weekend about him. I think Derek thinks every day should be all about him. This is valid. <laughs> Derek hijacked my c- college graduation. <laughs> he, that is true. He thought it should have been about Get him. Down. He hijacked my college graduation. We graduated within a week of each other. and he From gradu- high school and college. Yeah, yeah. He was graduating from high school. That happened on Tuesday. I graduated from college on Saturday or Sunday and because it was the same week and we were both graduates Derek thought that Sunday should also be about him and I'm pretty sure he was like offended that Katie did like a little speech and Derek wasn't a part of it and he's like what about me and we're like it's not about you bro and it was a thing you know that my wedding day is going to be about me and Chris you forget Chris well I didn't forget Chris I'm just making sure you know it has it is not about you (laughs) Whatever. <laughs> all right, all right. You can, can have a couple moments, but they'll have to be brief. Yeah, but mostly it's about me and Chris. And if Team Donut wins, maybe we could have a donut moment. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Wow, can I tell you something that happened to me when I was out of town this weekend? Well, before you, before no. you do that, Uh-oh. dang it. Are we tracking these? All right, these? all right. <laughs> yep. Jack was tracking yesterday. <laughs> but let's go. Before what you get to your moment. Mm-hmm. We have to talk talk about my moment. Of course we do. What happened at church. Mom, you were there. You were at Uh, church. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we kind of already talked about this because it's going to be. We did talk about Legendary with Ken and Mello. Well, it's going to be in this episode, but you say briefly. So very briefly, um, 
the pastor was giving his sermon and he asked, and, and, you know, I have quit fighting with your brother to get him up in the morning to go to church. It's like, I just want to go to church and enjoy myself. I don't want to have a battle. So it's like, just stay in bed if you want to stay in bed. But we went on a Saturday afternoon for Easter services and the pastor asked, um, in this, the only time he's ever mentioned this, was there anybody in the congregation that would admit being a wrestling fan <laughs> and it was just pretty funny that the one of the times <laughs> that he actually came with us he asks about wrestling fans he goes yeah there's two out and it's a big church yeah there's two out there that'll admit it and then he said asked for a rick flair woo and Derek got to give him a woo at the easter service which is really buffet i get yeah, I heard your woo wasn't very impressive. It was like, <laughs> woo! Yeah, he was very was muted, like which was kind of surprising since he had a green light to, like, give, give, him, a, give him a Ric Flair woo. But right. Yeah, and then he, he talked about finishing the story. He did not specifically mention any names or anything like that, but Derek attributes that that was a code name for the pastor being on board with Cody Rhodes finishing his story. I think that's a fair assumption. I think it is. So we'll see. Uh, are we really hoping that pastor is right? <laughs> are we really hoping? I'm really hoping Cody Rhodes finishes his story too. Ex- Me too. Exactly. Uh, what after church, after it's the church, the, the night I, I was like, Oh my God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's finish the story. This story won't be the end. Hallelujah. This is how we pray in the big crowds. Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, I do have a quick story yeah. that I just, I did. I told you I wanted to talk to you about the yeah, chirping. You did. We've been having a problem with the smoke, one of the smoke detectors. Mm-hmm. So dad tries to make it a habit at, you know, spring forward, fall back to change the batteries and the smoke detectors. Well, he... Missed it by a few weeks, but finally said, ooh, I haven't changed all the batteries. So we went around changing all the batteries. Well, then one of the ones that's down here started chirping. And it's just every so often, right? Chirp. 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 Yeah. And I don't know, 30 seconds, chirp. But it's like for, uh, over a long period of time can become pretty freaking annoying, right? So last yesterday morning I get up and I, um, Katie, I hear Katie, Dad, Sunday, tried to put a different battery in it. Wasn't really sure what the problem was. Anyway, I hear Katie say, Dad, do you hear that downstairs? Yeah, I hear it. Are you going to do something about that? No, I don't have time. Um, And I work from home on Mondays. And I'm like, what the hell? You're going to let that thing chirp all freaking day, right? When I'm here trying to work. And we had a podcast to record. Okay. So I'm like, are you kidding me? You're not going to change that? I'm like, I'm going to be here all day. He goes, oh, wait a minute. Isn't Jenna recording that podcast today? I better go fix that. I'm (laughs) like, oh, it doesn't matter that I'm going to be here all damn day hearing that stupid thing chirp. But yeah, he was fixed it for your podcast. So I just wanted you to feel the love from dad. Thanks, dad. Yeah, Yeah, thanks, dad. I'm sure our audience appreciates that as well. Well, I know. You would definitely hear it down here. Really? Yeah. It, I mean, and it was, you know, it it wasn't like super loud, but it was just that every oh, 30 it seconds. Was chirp. Very loud. <laughs> it was chirp. very loud. Chirp. It was very loud for me. I was trying to watch Raw. Well, downstairs. that was when he, he took a couple of them out and the whole system went off a couple of different times in the last exactly. three days. I But that's not, it wasn't the whole loudness that I was. There's like, it bothered me. It, it bothered all of us. Bothered the dogs. Bother me. Yeah, I, I get it. I was minding my own business, watching Raw, and I'm telling you that, easy, easy, and then, <laughs> burr, burr, burr. <laughs> Yeah, okay. No more so. screaming in the mic. But he has since just disconnected just the whole system stupid. because he's put three batteries in this particular smoke detector, and it keeps chirping. chirping. So I think he took it with him today. With the intention of buying a new one. I mean, there's other. There's one right there. There's others downstairs, but yeah, he's going to report it or not report it, but it, replace it. <laughs> yeah. Says so annoying. Yeah. Can I tell you my story now? I'm ready. You ready? I know mine, and the, the here it is. Before you sit, <sighs> before you go no to your way. your budget budget, I think it's 
today is a special day for for that for sure. I just want to say do congratulations to Claire. Congratulations, congratulations to Claire. The biggest biggest party this weekend. I'm really happy for her. Bachelorette always being a bachelorette. So, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Claire. <laughs> Woo! Woo! We did have lots of fun. Derek did. Um, I was on the phone with Derek at one point over the weekend, and he told me that he wanted to talk to Claire, and I That's said me. no because she was out with all the girls. And he said, well, give her this message, and then he started screaming in the phone at me, and I was like, I'm not going to do that, but if you want to make a video <laughs> and I'll show it to Claire, then you can do that. And so then we did make a, he made a video and sent it to me and I sent it to Claire or showed it to Claire. And then Claire did send you a pretty funny little video back. And yeah, that was fun. I, I was going to have that. <laughs> but do you know what happened while I was in Arizona? What? Mark was my Uber driver. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. So I'm serious. Do you know what it, this Mark? No, no, no. Your Mark was my Uber driver in Arizona. Your imaginary brother Mark. Well, well that is different. Mark is right here. I don't know what you're talking about. I think Mark <laughs> can be anywhere he wants. <laughs> I, I think Mark can be with me sometimes, too, because he's your imaginary brother. So sometimes I imagine that he's with me. And I'm telling you what, he was with me on Saturday in Arizona because I. Maybe it's different, Mark. No, it was your mark for sure. And no, it's not my mark. He, he, he was driving my Uber. I don't b- well, either that or nobody was. I had a driverless Uber. No human in the car with me. Imaginary human, a.k.a. Mark. It's not Mark. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Fine, it's not Mark. But... The, the car didn't have a driver, Derek. You know, normally we call an Uber when we're out of town and we're like, hey, we need a ride. This is where we are. Come pick us up. And somebody comes in their car and they pick us up and it's a real person. And that real person takes you wherever you need to go. Well, this time when I was in Arizona, there I, I called the Uber and then this notification popped up on my phone that was like making me second verify. Like I had already said I needed an Uber. And then it's like, are you sure you're OK with this car? It was a Jaguar, and I'm looking at this, and I'm like, why is it asking me again? And I'm reading it, and I'm a little confused, and then finally I see no human driver. (laughs) And I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's an electric car, or it's like, you know. Self-driving, yeah. Self-driving, that's the word I'm looking for. Yeah, and so it's this company called Waymo. And apparently they're all over. They make Waymo money because there's no driver. (laughs) Sorry. That's funny. payroll. That's good. But they. Unless Mark's making money. I don't know. I don't know either. Uh, But so next thing you know, the car gets there and it's across the street and we have to go over there. it, it, It does have this like device or all these different devices. Like you can see these cameras around the different parts of the car, like on the bottom, on the back and like on both bump side bumpers and. Uh, on the top it like almost looks like a police car it's not flashing like a police car but it's like got this big thing on the top that's like spinning around and it's basically just all these different cameras and it had no driver and my friend one of my friends is like Jenna why don't you get in the front seat or why don't you get in the driver's seat and I was like I've been drinking I'm not getting in the front (laughs) seat and I I'm telling you they would that would have been very like a no-no I'm sure because we're in the car And the first thing that was really funny that happened was the car, like, once everybody's in and settled, you actually had to press a button on the screen that said, start ride. So I pressed the button, and the car starts to go, and we get stopped because there's a different car in the parking lot with a real human driver who is running over a cone. And I'm in the car with no human driver, and the car with the real human driver is driving very poorly. And so we had to wait for the car. It's kind of ironic. I know, right? (laughs) So we had to wait for the car in front of us. The lady in the car had to get out, pull the cone out from under the tire. Like, it was a whole thing. And then we finally start going. Well, we get out on the open road, and one of the girls in the back seat wasn't wearing her seatbelt properly. So next thing you know, the car is ringing, and somebody comes on the car, and it's like, hello, this is Waymo support. The (laughs) right rear passenger needs to wear their seatbelt with the belt in front of their chest. And like it knew that the seatbelt was. Who was it? Uh, I believe it was 
when I looked back, Allison did not have her seatbelt on properly, but it was talking about Danny. So I don't know. <laughs> but Danny was directly behind me. So I'm just not really sure. Um, but yeah, it was wild. So and then they stayed on the phone until they determined that everything was good and we were following the rules. So I know if I would have gotten in that front seat, oh, they would have called immediately and been like, uh, get no. out. Yeah. So <coughs> um, it was very interesting. But I said that Mark was my driver because I had an imaginary driver. We know it wasn't Mark. It was a joke, Derek. Mark was you not in are Arizona. Crazy. Ma- yeah, you're nuts. Okay, because well, Mark wasn't in Arizona. Mark Obviously. was here. Okay, whatever. Well, that happened. I'm um, not sure I'd get in that car. Well, that's know. why it had uh, the verification. I know like you had to say I yes know. or no. But I was intrigued. I and get it. Luckily, there was enough of us that were were willing to get in the car because some of the other girls were like, "I'm not getting in that." Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I need four people. <laughs> like, we have eight people. We have two cars coming. I need at least three of you to say yes. And I luckily, three of the girls said they would I go. guess if it was, you know, we were going residential than, driving. We were going less than eight minutes. But uh, no way in hell I'd get, uh, I'd take one of those things and get on a highway. Yeah, if it would have been a longer drive, I might not have been as quick to say yes. Eager, but it was yeah. less than two miles. Yeah. Like, the Uber was $6.50. That's yeah. how short of a drive. They made way nuts. more money. <laughs> huh. But it was very cool. So I have something exciting that I, I don't want to jinx myself. So I'm pretty pumped. This has never happened to me. But knock on wood. Is that real wood? I don't know. <laughs> I might win my first basketball pool. <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited. Both of my final teams are still in. I have UConn Purdue in my final game. Currently, I'm in third place, but Chris has Purdue. He's in first place, but or, I'm sorry, Chris has UConn, but he has them playing Marquette, and Marquette's already out. And Katie has Purdue, and she has them playing a different team that's also already out. So I have the opportunity for both my teams to win, and then if UConn wins, I'm definitely winning the family pool. UConn or Purdue? I need UConn. My final is UConn versus Purdue. UConn wins. Okay. Well, well, well. That's, that's super awesome exciting. because I, I got UConn too. Uh, okay, I don't think that's true. I think you had <laughs> Baylor, but we're gonna go ahead and stick with that. Some of us just switch them. Yeah, we. We're, we got UConn. Yeah, totally UConn, obviously. I have UConn, Kentucky, and he has UConn, Baylor. I am a little bummed because UConn we're going to be flying during the women's game. The When Caitlin Clark in Iowa play UConn, we are going to be in the air. Are we going to be in the air? I don't know. Are we? Yeah. <laughs> Derek has been manifesting this for a Derek's while. Derek's not taking no for an answer about <laughs> WrestleMania. I want to be there. I do too. But I mean, currently I still have flights booked. I haven't canceled them yet. I could cancel them, but. Well, well, let's not do that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we will talk about WrestleMania pretty soon. And the weekly wrestling wrap Did you hear about the women's three-point line? Yeah. That was crazy. What the hell? That would never happen in a men's game. Oh, I don't. I don't think you can say that. Why? I, th- I don't think. I think it. It would never happen. I mean, I think the likelihood of that occurring at all is very, very slim. And basically, the subcontractor that was, you know, contracted to put the damn floor down screwed up. I don't think it has anything to do with men or women. I think they somebody would have been paying a lot more of attention at the men's league. Maybe, maybe not, but I mean, Did you, you know, hear the what happened? I have not heard what happened. The the three point line got put together and it was nine inches off. It was short. Short. Mm. But short. I mean, if you think about it, right, both team you you switch w- which way you're going during the half, right? So both teams had the equal opportunity for short shots. They had the same amount of time, unless there was an overtime potentially, right? They had the same amount of time to have yeah. the short field. So, but when they came in yesterday for the the final game, which was um, uh, Iowa Iowa versus LSU, LSU, which is a repeat of the championship game last year, and this was to go to the final Mm -hmm. four, there was a very visible black circle that was, the reason you could see it is because the whole field was like a, like a light, regular 
gymnasium color, mm-hmm. that brown. And then the arc was like this lighter color. Okay. Right. Okay. But, but then there was a black stripe around the arc. Well, you could see that there was a right, difference, a different color in there. But I don't know that it has anything to do with men's versus women's. I th- I just think the subcontractor jacked up. I just think that that kind of neglect would not happen. I mean, I thought that, you know, Caitlin Clark. Why is her name? Angel Reese. Angel Reese. Her first name was. Uh, well, I mean. What incredible ambassadors for women's basketball. Oh, my god! The gosh. two of them. Just so poised, and I, I just, they were super, imp- well, all of the ladies were, but, I mean, those are the two stars of those two teams. Right. Um, it was a great game. I watched every minute of it. I mean. 90 points at halftime. Yeah. Wow. It was a great game. Like, UConn, Illinois over the weekend was, like, what, 21 to 23 at halftime? Yeah. 90 points at halftime between those two teams yeah it was it was a super game to watch and and I think you know the the just the I mean I've been watching freaking women's college basketball for years I don't know if you remember going to the when the final four was here in St. Louis all those years ago yeah it was like Oklahoma it um it was UConn and Oklahoma was there I think Stanford was one of the four teams that we saw I can't remember the fourth one I mean um but that was the year that Gino Ariyama took the – I think that was the year they had their flawless undefeated. season. Undefeated. Yeah. all the way through. I mean, UConn's been a freaking powerhouse for years. And then you got Candace Parker with Tennessee. Love to watch her play. And Did that's you hear that Caitlin Clark wanted to play for UConn and Gino never paid her any attention in high school? Oh, no, I, I didn't. Now she's that. got the opportunity to beat him to go to the final championship game. Well, that's kind of poetic. Right? Anyway. So – Super cool, though, but great. The ladies did wonderful. It was a lot of fun to watch. I love college basketball, men's and women's. Yep. So so I guess mom was a little offended last week when we were talking about her uh, always bringing you to work late, Derek, <laughs> because this morning <laughs> she sent Katie and I a picture from the Humane Society that you were there right at 10, 10 a.m. And you know what? Nine out of ten times, it is not my fault if we're not there at 10 a.m. I believe that. But there are occasions when I'm not quite ready to get out the door but well I was late today to pick him up and I tried to call him to tell him that but his phone was dead but his phone was dead so I was late to pick him up this afternoon tried to call him phone was dead and then what happened when I got there to pick you up you were late (laughs) you're late (laughs) and were you ready I was ready to go I don't know what she's doing well I have to tell you last week when I was so sick he was he I kept calling him and, and I'm going straight to it was I wasn't even going to voicemail. It was like you knew I knew his phone was dead. And I was right. like, son of a I'm like, I got to put on some real clothes because I'm going to have to walk into the Humane Society. And here I am like dragging out of bed just to go pick him up, just to pick him up with a ponytail in my hair. But at least I put jeans on so I didn't walk in there with my pajama pants on to pick him up. It was a lot. That will be embarrassing <laughs> for all of us. <laughs> well, so <coughs> part of the problem was he was using his portable charger incorrectly, which yeah, I, I taught heard. him how to use it today. So hopefully we won't be having this problem again. But today I went to pick him up and I almost went all the way to the back. And then I saw him sitting there. He was actually sitting at the desk area trying to use the phone to call me. <laughs> and I, We got in the car and I was like, so, you know, my number now, how are you going to call me? And he tells me, he's like, yeah, I know your number. And he's like, 314-2454. I'm like, well, that wasn't going to get you far. No. <laughs> like, not only is it nowhere close to my number, but it's also not enough numbers. Yeah, there's that. And then he was yelling at me, like literally, because when he had to come out of the desk area to be able to walk out with me, he had to exit to the opposite side of where I was from, where I was standing. And he's like pointing across the you made study at me. You were late. <laughs> like I tried to call you and tell you, bro. I tried. Charge your phone at night. It's it's all right. I've be been fine. charging my phone. Okay. Well, you didn't charge it enough. So what uh, what do you think about that hailstorm last night, Derek? That was a lot. That was something out. It sounded like there was. It sounded worse on the roof. I mean, they were, we got uh, some that were about that big. Most of them were like pea size, but we got some that were, you know, not really golf ball, but marble size, maybe. Well, speaking of that, but boy, it was loud. On on the show, which is, which is where the place. Did they have a hellstorm? I think Shusha was so uh, messed with the weather 
you use magic and 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 and, and there's hell falling from in front of a sky. Was it big or little? It was big, actually. Everyone started showing up, showing up, pr- protected, trying to get out there before. It hit him in the head. Hit him in the head. And Jerry, he said, three lights. <laughs> and then, boom, and hit his head. Did dad get hit between the garage and the car? He probably did, but. He didn't complain about yeah, it. Yeah, not that bad. But man, I mean, like, what, a month or so ago? Or not, maybe not even that long. I wonder, like, why is the hail sometimes this big and sometimes this big and sometimes... Like, that stuff that hit O'Fallon last week, that was huge. Like, how does it go from pea size to golf, you know, to marble, to golf ball, to baseball, to softball, softball yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. Last year, day, I, I did make a video for it. MJ, I, I was getting a little bit of curious what was go- going on. With he was concerned because of our weather that there was something potentially wrong with Monday Night Raw. And we were trying to assure him that it's really unlikely that New York City was getting the same exact weather that we were because it's halfway across the country. It's Brooklyn, New York. That's New York City. It's a borough it's of New York. New York City is... Brooklyn. Okay. It, it uh, is New uh, York City. And also he called me asking the same thing. And I thought for sure he was calling to check on me because the last time the tornado sirens went off, he was very upset with me that I didn't go downstairs <laughs> quick enough. So I thought for sure oh yeah, he was did you calling went to, to the basement. I did go to the basement yesterday. Good job. I thought that's why he was calling. And then he called to ask me about the wrestlers that are halfway across the country. I'm like, bro, are you serious? Yeah. What's wrong with you? But okay. Anyway, I think it is time that we get to our girl Kelly Mano. All right. Later this week. I'm excited to hear from Kelly. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, here's Kelly. All right, guys. Welcome back to Baker's Victorian. And it's good to be alive, baby. Oh, good good to, to be alive. Be alive. <laughs> it's going to be alive right about now. It's going to be alive right about now. Oh, wow. Anyway, this is going to be a very awesome, awesome, awesome day on the podcast. Who do we have? I I will get to this, uh, get to this special guest. Okay. And I can't wait to introduce her to the world. How how cool she is! But first, we got Jenny Nicole Baker, the host. We got Katie Murray, get Kevin Baker over there. Jack over there. What's up? What's up? And and, and this week is be more special to start out. WrestleMania week, and this is amazing. WrestleMania is coming up. I c- can't wait for that. And you know what else is so special? What's that? With WrestleMania, I bet you're gonna tell us. We got Miss Kelly Manado. <laughs> Kelly, Mano. hi guys. <laughs> I'm gonna have Derek come with me everywhere and introduce me. Just be my hype man. Oh, he's a great hype, hype man. He's a very good hype man. <laughs> Just ask Paul Heyman that. Oh, <laughs> by the time this podcast comes out, WrestleMania weekend will be over, though. Oh, so yes. we'll have all the answers. But yes, maybe Cody Rhodes will have finished the story. This podcast will actually be yeah. coming out on somebody's birthday. Not mine. Yours? Mine. Well, happy birthday. Thank you. Next Monday will be Derek's 27th birthday. 27. Next Monday is also the Eclipse. I'm excited for that. Where yeah. are you going to be watching it? Do I'm, you have a plan? Go- I'm going somewhere. I missed the first one. I was traveling. I was so excited for it. And I didn't realize until like three weeks before that I wouldn't even be in town for it. So I was in Minnesota, missed the whole thing. And so I don't know where I'm going. Apparently everywhere is sold out and hotels are like $700. So I may just drive and like park in a Piggly Wiggly parking lot and watch it. But I'm, I'm going somewhere that it's 100%. So well, we are going to be in Philadelphia for during the eclipse. So... Really? Do you know what the eclipse is, Derek? I know exactly um exactly the your eclipse is is about because uh, I don't know learn about lunar eclipse and science before like so I I do learn this in, in science class mm-hmm. in high school. I know my I tell you 
So we got the this, this sun up in the sky, and the moon goes toward the, the, the sun, bl- blocking the sun, and it goes right through it, like the drive to, to the light. That's pretty good. And it makes everything dark because the moon is in the way of the sun, right? Yeah, that's that exactly it what it is. Yeah, yeah, it makes everything dark during the daytime. So are exactly. you guys not coming back on Monday the 8th? We are, but our flights are late. We are leaving late Friday and late Monday. I actually had to break the news to Derek a couple weeks ago because... I'm not too worried about that. I am confident I will get SmackDown and Raw in. Oh, we my are, God. He's going to be... Fl- we are going to be flying during those events. We will be in an airplane during Friday Night SmackDown and Monday Night Raw. Brutal. And Derek doesn't believe me. And I tried to show him <laughs> oh the tickets. No. <laughs> he's like, no, we'll be back. And I'm like... Uh, we'll figure it out. I'm like, well... That's not how time works, dude. It's like the clock says otherwise. It's fake like your ADHD, Jenna. Yeah. He's... Um, he just doesn't believe me. Good, good call for that one. And then he tried <laughs> to tell me that he's going to watch it on the plane. And I was like, okay, good luck. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see how that goes for us. But... You could probably watch There's an old episode on the plane. Yeah. If you download it. We'll figure it That's out. You can watch it as soon as you get home, though. You know, I feel it. back when I grew up as a dinosaur, if we didn't see something on TV, we did not get to watch it again. That's not how it works. We couldn't record anything. I mean, we had VHSs, but nobody knew how to work them, like record. So at least you get to, what is it, DVR it? TiVo yeah. it is that a he, he DVRs it he gets to watch it on Hulu he can record uh, it on Hulu he's got all you're sorts fine. of ways you're but, fine but he does think that it has to be appointment television and he does get a little bit out of shape when it's not able to be appointment television but that's okay okay but what's more important being able to see Friday Night Smackdown and Monday Night hey. Raw on time or going to Wrestlemania Technically, we don't even know if we have asked WrestleMania tickets yet, so there's that. Oh, I mean, no. you could always cancel your trip, and that way you don't have to mess with Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown. He likes to take his headphones off. When he doesn't like what's being said. But it's not like he <laughs> can't a, hear us. <laughs> honestly, like, I completely get that tactic. Like, that, <laughs> that, that sounds exactly like something that would make sense in my brain. So you do – Kelly posts a lot of videos about being Gen X. Do you mm-hmm. know what that means, Derek? Well, that is re- – very cool about Zen Egg for sure. I will. Let me talk about. Let me talk about it. Let you talk about it. But, but I first. I, but first. But do you remember the other, other night? Tell me. At the Blues game. Makeup. When we talked to Layla, we saw our friend Layla at the Blues game. Do you Did? do you know that Layla is very good friends with Kelly's daughter? Oh, we know. Layla is at my house right now. Layla thinks she lives at my house. <laughs> She's like my bonus kid. But what's funny is that bonus. I always wanted more. I wanted more than three kids. It just didn't work out for me. And my daughters are Lucy and Libby Lou. And I, if I had another daughter, it was going to be Layla. I loved that name. So then she just showed up one day and was like, hey, I'm friends with your kids. And I'm going to just hang out here all the time. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, look, I finally got my, my third girl. So or my, yeah, my third girl. So it, it works, works out great. It does. But they just won a championship or something. So Layla and, and my youngest daughter play on the same uh, all girls uh, Chesterfield Falcons team. And they just won what basically what it's called the blue note cup, but it's state for Missouri. So they are the Bantam B3 champions of the state of Missouri and they had to beat a boys team to get there. And um, yeah, so it's, it's amazing. So Layla and Libby have had a very exciting uh, last couple months. And they play hockey together, yeah? Yes, they're on the same line. They're line mates. So wow. um, Libby plays, I think, left wing, and Layla plays right wing. And they do matching, like, eye black every week and stuff. And, it, yeah, they're very silly. And it, I bet they, like, tag team that stuff. Because they're the people who, like, penetrate the goal, yes? Yes. Well, they also kind of, like, I mean, they're, like, the forwards. They, they're going to dig right. the puck out of the corners and get it in front of the net for, like, the mm-hmm. center. But, but, yeah, they definitely are up there fighting hard. So how so fun they play boys teams. Yeah. So there's not um, girls. Hockey is not popular enough in Missouri to have its own league. So if you're a girl and you want to play hockey, you have one option, which is just put yourself on a boys team um, because the, the boys leagues around here are thriving. I mean, we have so many great clubs and so many different levels. Um, but if you're a girl, you can either jump in or play with boys, jump in and play with the boys on their team or there's a couple of all girl teams kind of put together by region so there's like one in south county one in maryland heights and then one in illinois and that's it 
So you have to drive to be on one of those girls' teams, but then you play in the all-boys league. So, um, so yeah, until – I mean, I dream of a day when hockey is so popular with the girls that we just have an entire league of it, and that one day my girls will tell their grandkids, like, back in my day, like, we had to beat the boys if we wanted to, to win state, you know. And so it's, it's really cool that they did that, and I just the more attention we can bring to, like, girls' hockey, the happier I am. Well, I thought sport. it was impressive that they won state, but it's even more impressive that they won state and by beating boys. And they beat a boys team that had beat them three times that year. We had already played them throughout the season several times, and they had beat us three times. And so not not that – I mean, we weren't the underdog because, we, you know, we are just as good of a team as them, but it, it wasn't expected for us to win. And that stadium, I mean, it was packed. They were the only – they were only one of two girls' teams in any of the final games. And then – when the girls went ahead, the place like lost its mind. And then at, at the community center we were at, at the Centene Community Center, there's like four different rinks. So people from the other rinks started catching wind. Like, hey, this girls team is in the league. They, they might win this. And people just started pouring in. And by the time they won, it was like hundreds of people like smooshed in the stands, standing room all over. I mean, it was just crazy. I Every, have chills just listening oh, to you talk about it, it. It was so neat. It was the, the coolest experience ever. I went there that day thinking like, you know, having my speech in my head for my kid on the way home of like, hey, at least you made it to the final game. Like, I know <laughs> you didn't win. Like, I was rehearsing it in my head. And then it was just, yeah, it was incredible. It was the greatest youth sports moment I've ever gotten to witness as a parent. And I've been a sports parent for 15 years. That's so, so awesome. That wow. takes a lot of grit to be able to, I mean, not even despite the whole gender difference and everything, mm -hmm. like losing to a th team three different yeah. times and then having to face them in a championship game like that could be something that puts up a roadblock for some teams and sure. like makes them feel like they're not going to win but it's so awesome that they were able to overcome yeah. ab able to overcome that and get that win that's that's really impressive I think it kind of played to their advantage because I think that to an extent the boys team kind of knew what they were up against and mm -hmm. knew what effort they needed to put forth to beat them because they'd done it several times before but then the girls just came out it was like a different team out there that's so awesome. they, they caught him by surprise, and, and it, it was amazing. They were ready to go. Yes. They, they, they came out ready. on fire. Yeah. On fire. Wow. So, Derek, you'll have to come to one of my girls' games. We would love that. Our yeah. family, we're bi a big be, sports family. Yep. And mom awesome. misses going to sports games. Like, Katie was a huge softball player, mm -hmm. and mom just lived to go to watch her games and be at all the things. And she actually played in a – She's a in her first year of teaching, and she played in a teachers versus students game. And was our mom so excited to go funny. back? So <laughs> excited! We all showed up, and she was like, "There was multiple people that were like, your whole family came for this." And they, she was like, "My yep. whole family was not missing this. They were no. looking for reasons to go to games." My son is 19 now, and I'm like, "Hey, when are you gonna join a beer league, like <laughs> hockey beer league? Mom can come watch, you know." <laughs> the hockey beer league and he's like mom no i saw your son graduated yeah. last year yeah right uh-huh so was he a part of that senior prank yes he i'm the one who filmed it and so it yeah he was part of that senior prank that was so funny tell them what happened so uh, i had almost nothing to do with it the kids decided that so the seniors last day was and this is at francis hall high school the seniors last day was on let's say like a wednesday but then the the freshmen sophomores and juniors and all the teacher and faculty still had to go in on thursday and friday so the seniors decided to pull a prank on that thursday morning and they called it anything but a car so kids do these things nowadays where they have a theme day like anything but a backpack and then kids bring their their school supplies in anything but a backpack so they're like rolling a cooler or you know, silly things so they decided to have all of the seniors or as many as wanted to participate drive the route up to school in anything but a car so there were bicycles there were skateboards there were golf carts there was a lawnmower I, I mean these kids organized this all completely on their own now I knew this was going on because my son was a senior but I also had to get my freshman daughter to school that day so I had to sit in that traffic and as I was watching it I thought oh my god they're really doing it like whatever they're doing like it's working so I took some video of it and then I took some of the video the kids took put it to music put it up online and I, like within three or four hours I had Barstool calling me saying oh my gosh can we post this I'm like oh these kids are gonna die and they did they they were so excited about it 
It was hilarious. I, I was watching some of your videos today just, mm-hmm. you know, to refresh my memory and to know what I wanted to talk about. But I remember when I first saw that and I was dying. Like, yes. I remember I'm pretty sure I sent it to the family group chat and I'm like, look at this. This is so funny. I put like, it to the E.T. music when he's like pedaling like across the sky. And yeah, and I, like, so they went like when people were arriving at school. So they, it caused a bunch of traffic and stuff. Oh, they had to send out like um, like emails saying like, hey, the buses are like 45 minutes late. None of the teachers could get to school on team. There is only one road that goes to our high school. That's it. There's no other road that goes there. So everyone is backed up. The, the teachers, the faculty, the students, people trying to drop their kids off and get to work on time. And it was, to me, I love a good harmless prank. If the worst thing that happened was somebody was late to work, then like, it's funny. <laughs> it's yeah. really funny. I loved it. I thought it was a great, fun, harmless prank. And how did admin handle it? They handled it great because most of the kids who set it up were their like valedictorians. It was the it was the really good kids in class because I was scared when I put the video out and and you guys know being in social media, you have an idea of like what your videos are going to do, but you never really know. Right. You never really know. So I thought it was a great video. Put it out there. And then when Barstool started contacting me and stuff, I started calling other kids parents. I was like, hey you know, this video is going to go viral. Just so you know, I wasn't there. I didn't plan it. This is not Kelly Mano's fault. If these kids get in trouble, I had nothing to do with this. I just filmed it publicly, like what was happening in front of me. And the parents were like, we're fine with it. Part of me was worried that administration was going to be like, they can't graduate or they didn't say a word. Yeah, well, it was a pretty, like, harmless prank. Like, nothing actually nothing that bad actually happened. happened. Nothing was damaged. It was just, like, you just see this huge line of cars. And her video is so funny because it's like, why is there all this traffic? Uh-huh. And then at the end of the video, it you cuts see to the this, kids. this group of kids in all these different types of transportation, like, you know, riding their bikes and the, the skateboards and all the things. And it's just like, uh, and the look on their faces, like it brings you back to like that, that freedom of being like the first day out of high school, like how crazy that feeling was, but then like capture it on film. And, and also for anyone who got bent out of shape because somebody was late to work, that road that goes to our high school goes to like nothing afterwards. It's like farm fields. So it's not like they were blocking a road to get to like a major city or, you know, oh, and also they had the police in on it. These kids were so responsible. They went to the police department and said, we need a police escort just in case there's an emergency that comes across the radio, like 911, and you need to get us out of the street. So they had a police escort and everything. So it was it was a really great prank, like top to bottom. I think like as administrators at a high school, you can expect there to be a senior prank. Mm-hmm. And so it coming through as harmless as that, I think they were probably just relieved and they thought we're like, this is funny. This is good. This is something that doesn't ruin our day. I agree 100%. Yeah, it was even just watching it back. I was like, oh, my gosh, I remember when I first saw this, yeah. how hilarious it was. Yeah. But so you ha- I know you've been kind of in the media space for a long time. So kind of like walk me through what did your career look like before and then kind of the transition to social media and like what you do now and kind of like give me that background. Yeah, I've always wanted to work in morning radio and growing up I used to listen to a show called the Stephen D.C. Show every morning going to school and I'm like, man, I'm stuck going to school. Mom is stuck going to work and these guys are making like fart jokes on the radio. I'm like, this is what I want to do with my life. Like, yeah, like they're making prank phone calls and stuff at like 7 a.m. And I'm like, God, this is exactly what I want to do. And I told my mom, I'm like, I'm going to work for these guys. I'm going to grow up and work there. And so grew up, started working there. I was an intern for a while. Then I was their assistant producer. Um, And then, I mean, it was so much fun. It's everything you think, fart jokes and prank phone calls and stuff like that. Um, And then my radio career kind of like evolved. I did some country music and some other things. But then like overall, like the radio business just pays terribly. Right. I mean, horribly. I I was like, wait, I'm supposed to make a living on this? Like, and I I started having kids and stuff. I'm like, this this dream has got to go. Like, I love it, but I physically can't make a living doing this even at like one of the top stations so I transitioned and did like some photography and and video for a while I did a podcast from 2015 to 2020 COVID shut it down and when COVID shut down my podcast I was bored to death and decided to try TikTok Uh, I remember like sitting down signing up for an account with my daughter they helped me and they're like mom just don't use your real name. We don't want kids at school to know that our mom is on TikTok. And I'm like, why would the kids at school ever like find my TikTok? <laughs> like, that's so dumb. I'm not making like a fake name. Like, I'm just going to put my name. And then it just, 
it just blew up. I mean, my, my TikTok went from, like, I think I started it in, like, February of 2020, and by August, I had a million followers. Yeah. So it was crazy. Yeah, we were similar. We started, like, March, and by June, had a million followers. Oh, and that was a special time. Yeah. And, and oh. there was nothing else to do. Exactly. We We started, and a week later, I lost my job. I actually used to work in radio also. Okay. I was on the sales side of things, so I yep. worked for iHeart, like, one of my first jobs, pretty much sure. my first real job out of college. And then when COVID hit, I was working for what's now Odyssey, but Intercom at the time. Yep. But I was on the sales side of things, but I always wanted to be on the creative side mm-hmm. of things. I didn't necessarily like need to be the host per se, but I even like back when I worked in radio, I was like, it would be the coolest thing ever if I could have a radio show with Derek because I knew he was the star. Right. Like I've always known that he was of, of our family. Like he is just so his – Energy very main is, character yeah he gives <laughs> yeah main character energy he's hilarious and like but I've, I've always just wanted to create something where he could thrive and then that's when sh- I I had he had always wanted a YouTube channel so I said I promised him one day I'd make him a YouTube channel and then when COVID first started I was like okay well I guess I'm gonna have a lot of time on my hands I'll start this YouTube channel and I was like YouTube you can't get on YouTube if you're not gonna get on TikTok I said TikTok is it right now TikTok yeah. are you the youngest yes, I'm the youngest okay she's that's a Gen Zer I'm it all makes sense yeah <laughs> yeah so sh- and I'm like okay if you say we gotta be on TikTok we gotta be on TikTok so then we started it and then I lost my job and then it's like okay well now I really got a lot of time on my hands and that's all I did and that's I'd been sent home for my freshman year of college so I <sighs> wasn't living at home and then now I'm stuck at home with the family and everything. So I really helped get everything launched too. Cause I mean, for the first like month or so, we weren't really seeing Jenna because of COVID and we were supposed to be like restricting everything. Yeah. Right. I was just editing stuff. Like, she Oh, was just so you weren't me. living here. Yeah. I didn't live here. So she was just sending me videos and I would edit them and post them for these two. And it was like really these two in their chaos and him barging into a room in the middle of the night right. and sharing a bathroom and yelling at each other and all the chaotic things that happen when you have adult children living in at home. Yeah. And the first uh, video that ever went like super viral was so hilarious because for some reason he's like super mad at her. She wasn't even there at the house, but he was <laughs> pissed at Jenna and, and normally it's the other way around. If he's mad at one of us, it's typically Kate, typically uh-huh. me, little sis. Um, and so he's cleaning the stairs, which is a chore he does often. Like, you know, he has a certain amount of chores that he's responsible for around the house and he does chores that he is good at doing. So he does the dishes, he does the laundry, he sweeps the stairs. So it's not like he was doing something (laughs) abnormal, but that is what he was doing in this video. Mm -hmm. And I like walk up and I'm like, Derek, who's your favorite sister? Thinking that I could get it on video that he was saying it was me. And he's like, not now, Katie. And I'm like, Derek, who's your favorite sister? And he said, I said, not now. And he like yells it. (laughs) And so we post that. It was like probably a seven or to 10 second video. And it just started blowing up. I think we went from having like 1,000 followers to then like a couple hours later, we had like 10,000, 20,000. And it like grew overnight, like hundreds of thousands of followers overnight. People don't understand how insane it was. was I'm telling you in like 30 or 40 years, they're going to have like a Netflix documentary about those of us who became TikTok famous during COVID because we all have the same story. Mm -hmm. But it just, it's still so bizarre. And so Derek, when was the first time that you got, that you realized you guys went viral? Do you remember? Blow my mind. You blew your well, mind? Do you remember the first time you got recognized? Do you remember where we were? I don't know. I don't know exactly. Well, because it was yeah. COVID, so we weren't really going out. Right. And he especially wasn't going out. Like, if we were going to the grocery store and stuff. Because at the time, too, it was like, you know, we, we talked to the Down Syndrome Association a lot. We didn't really know how he would fare if he got COVID. Like, he was in, I don't even remember what they called high it. High risk. He was high risk, according to the Down Syndrome Association. So it's not like we were letting him go out to the grocery store or like doing all of those things where that like the basic things that we were going out for. So it was it was um, 2020, like June, June. Mm -hmm. and we went to Michigan and we were staying at a cabin. So we really weren't going out at all, except for one day we went to Mackinac Island. And I don't know if you've ever been to Mackinac Uh -uh. Island, but it's like They have no cars on the island, so they have, like, horse and buggies, and they they might have golf carts, but it's very, like, old school, cobblestone streets. Like, it's just a very cool spot, 
And that was the only like actual touristy thing we were doing that whole trip because it was still very much hardcore COVID times. And yeah. so we, were, you know, all had our masks on and we did go to Mackinac Island that day and we were buying chocolate and no, we were buying fudge. We were buying fudge. It, it was like a chocolate fudge candy store. Uh huh. And we had bought our stuff and then we were going outside. And next thing you know, here comes this worker and she comes running out and she's like, oh, my gosh, what was her name? I shouldn't remember it. I edited all the videos. Um, and she was the first person. She was like, are you Derek? And she recognized Derek and Derek, of course, gave her a hug and we took some pictures with her and stuff. And then she was like, come back in. And she like, let us try some more fudge and gave us some like fudge for free. And Derek just thought it was the coolest thing ever. And then we asked Stacy, her name's Stacy. And then um, th we've been back to Michigan a couple times since then and stayed at the same little place. And so we've been back and I was like messaging her. I'm like, do you still work there? And like we went back another time and got that's to see really her again. cool. And she was it was the first time. And now it's like we can't go anywhere without him. I'm sure recognized because it's I mean, especially when we go out, all five of us like we are very recognizable when together it's the whole family of five. But he alone is very like we'll be sitting at, at, you know, dinner and he'll come back from the bathroom and be like, I got recognized. And we'll be yeah. like, oh, of course you did, Derek. Yeah, <laughs> my, and I went through the same thing Derek did, whereas, like, you went into COVID just being, like, a normal person, and then all of a sudden it was over, and you were famous, and everybody knew who you were. And then coming back out in the world was hard enough for, for people who had just stayed home. But when you suddenly became famous over COVID, and you didn't realize that you became famous, because to me, I've always been a storyteller and an oversharer, and this is what I've always done. So having the big TikTok platform, I mean, it was cool that I had so many followers, but I, I didn't really put it in perspective until I started leaving the house. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, like, so do what? you have a first time that you, like, really remember? I think my first time, the first time I got recognized, I got recognized, like, four times in one day. I was just taking my daughter to her cheerleading game. And it was, like, it was the first time at a football game without a mask because we were in, like, open air. And it was the concession stand worker. And then it was someone else. And then it was someone else. And then I was like, oh, my gosh. Now, Derek is more recognizable than me. I can blend in with most middle-aged moms. Like if I throw on a ball cap or like, it's not like I'm Leonardo DiCaprio and people are like screaming my name everywhere I go. But if I go somewhere where I know my audience is going to be yeah. like a grocery store or, you know, something like, like, like Black Friday at the mall was insane. That was the one time that I've ever had to go. All right, I'm going to go to my car because, you know, middle-aged women who shop at Black Friday, like, that is my audience. Right. And the mall was so packed. And also the way you're facing each other constantly that my girls were like, Mom, you're, you're slowing us down. We want to shop. You keep getting stopped. So I was like, I'll, just, I'll, I'll go in the car because I'm so famous. <laughs> but <laughs> it was just a combination of being Black Friday and, and that being a spot where my demographic is. Sure. And so I know I know what it's like. Well, speaking, oh, well, you should see us at a wrestling of, event. Yeah. Oh, I bet. I bet. <laughs> How do you feel at a wrestling event, Derek? Speaking of that, um, before, before we talk about wrestling event, this is actually um, really funny. Um you did mention the mall. Mm hmm One of our friends on TikTok, his name is Jacob. Mm hmm He's he's also on TikTok as well. well. You mean Jacob who we met through TikTok? Jacob from Ohio? Cliff in Ohio, that's the one. Jacob. He's one of our followers that we've made friends with. Yeah. Awesome. Jacob. Went to Target and saw Rhea Ripley at Target. Yeah. So Jacob is, we actually met him at a big WWE event that was here in St. Louis. And he was so sweet. He actually bought Derek a shirt. And he and came. And I still have it now. You do still have it. He came over, gave Derek this shirt. <laughs> And I just thought that was so nice. I wanted to do something special for him. So I had been messaging him on Instagram, and then I set it up so that Jacob and Derek could have, like, a little FaceTime conversation to say mm -hmm. hello, say thank you for the shirt, whatever. That was in January of 2022. Well, him and his dad go to many of these wrestling events that we go to. And so every mm -hmm. time we go to one of these different wrestling events, we've gotten to see Jacob again and hang out with him. And then this past one, we were actually – me and Derek and mom watched the Chiefs game with Jacob and his dad. Yeah. And yeah. we've just like made friends with him. He actually just texted me right before this podcast started. And oh, really? What do you think? He was asking about this weekend to see if we we're going to be in Philadelphia. Oh. Um, and so now he's like one of our 
he's like our first follower that turned like I have actual friends. I have so many followers that have become my friends. It's hilarious. And it's completely normal to them now. Yeah. And so, you know, one story was this this girl was like, hey, I know that you follow a lot of true crime. Do you know about Crime Con? It's this like convention. It's in Florida this year. Um, I think I'm going to go. A- and I looked at her online. I'm like, she looks really normal. And we had mutual friends on Facebook. And um, I was like, yeah, you want to go together? And she's like, what? I'm like, well, do you want to go together? Like, I, like I, if I go, I need somebody to go with. You know, and she was like, sure, yeah, okay. And so I went with her to Crime Con. We stayed in the same hotel and now we're friends. You know, what is Crime Con? Crime Con is a big convention where you go and study basically crime in like an ethical way. It's not like a a gory, weird thing, but you learn about, you know, I've taken classes on blood spatter and facial recognition and and you you have these big seminars where um, like this year, John Benet Ramsey's dad is going to be speaking. And um, it's just that's pretty creepy. (laughs) <laughs> it is creepy. It is creepy and it's amazing at the same time because I love, I really love good police work and I also really love bad police work. Like I'm just obsessed with both ends of the spectrum, how they can be so amazing and then also like drop the ball so poorly. And I never had the balls to be a police officer. Like I didn't have the, the guts to do it. So I just live vicariously through these sure. crime con classes. I saw you made a lot of videos about the the Maca, um, the Alec... Alec, Alec Murdoch, yeah. Yeah, that. I was watching some of those videos earlier. You had quite uh, the take on some of it. I just, it's hard because I feel like my brain really works like a criminal. Like, I feel like I could have been a criminal if I wanted to be one. Like, God just life. God just gave me a shady brain of, like, like how can I beat the system in this situation or that situation? So I think that's also why I kind of get into the c- true crime thing because I, I can figure stuff out can we pretty talk well. About and someone else? No, we want to talk about murder, Derek. Derek. Derek, that's not very nice. What if we talk about murderers who wrestle each other? Ooh. Okay, I like to move on. Derek's <laughs> scared. Derek's creeped d- out. <laughs> You're going to give him nightmares. Derek does this thing where he like acts like he really likes horror movies. Like when a new horror movie comes out, he knows exactly when it's going to come out. He's watched the the trailer. But when you're like, are you going to go see it? No. no. No, no, Derek, I'm the same. High five. Dude, I will not see a scary movie for anything. I will watch a documentary about someone chopped up in 20 pieces all night and sleep okay, like... please stop this. But, <laughs> I, but I can't go see a fake scary movie. So Derek, the think? scariest movie that Derek likes is Goosebumps. That's, a, that's his scary caliber. My scary caliber is Jaws, the shark movie from the 80s. That was when I decided I did not like scary movies. That was... Do you have any, any opinions about um, Gypsy Rose Blanchard and her husband divorcing? Um, I mean, I knew it was coming. Right. You know, like she's just that girl's just going to have a couple years where she's going to be messed up. Yeah. And hopefully she gets it back on track and, and hope it's just like how how bad is she going to be messed up? You know, we're all just sort of sitting and watching and waiting. I hope she has good people. So, yeah, I hope that there it sounds like she has like a decent relationship with her dad and mm-hmm. her stepmom. It does. So I'm like hopeful that. She has some people in her corner that are actually there to yeah. see her thrive and not yep. just to. Everyone's you know. cheering her on. I just nobody can do it but her. So hopefully she's where she needs to be and has the therapy and support she needs. And I would love to see her. You know, for this to be a good story for her. Uh, you know, in ten years. So when we were little, Derek was obsessed with this movie called Mostly Ghostly. You remember that movie? Give me a sec. Oh, he'll he'll put his headphones. He's ready back to on. listen now. So okay. he was obsessed with this movie called Mostly Ghostly. It was yes. like a Disney scary horror movie, whatever that they played during Halloween. But we had a hard copy that he would just throw on the DVD all the time, and I was terrified of it. Like if you look this up, like the ghost, the main character ghost, in Mostly Ghostly is so freaky they're scary and it used to give me nightmares like I used to hate that he would watch that all the time but he like he had a few movies when we were growing up that he would just kind of like fixate on yep and then he would just watch them over and over and over again mostly ghostly sky high um oh I'm the same way I would just watch the same movies over and over again no regret haunting hour yeah, he loved Scooby Doo. He had multiple Scooby Doo DVDs that would have like you know ten episodes per DVD or something, and he would just watch those over and over and over again on um, his little portable DVD player that we'd take on road trips. You nice. also liked Monster House. Remember that movie? Oh yeah. See, like Disney scary movies. That's where Derek. That's like, a good. Ca- that's that's a good caliber. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I that's a good threshold. I but can see like. That. 
The Conjuring, was that the one that just came out recently? That he was like, it's a no for me, dog. No way. That one's like really scary, right? Yeah. You watched the one with Josh Hutcherson. What's that one called? With the like, the people like Chuck E. Cheese. What's that one called? Oh, oh you mean Friday Night at Freddy's. Mm-hmm. Five Nights at Freddy's. Yeah, yeah. I, I did watch that. It was I, super good. I was surprised that he liked it because I actually watched it with my fiance and I was, I, I, I wasn't like horribly scared of it, but I was surprised that. That Derek he, gave yeah. it good reviews because I was like, this is a little on the well, scary threshold. Well, you should work on it. Oh, what am I supposed to work on? Uh, let's see. The, edit the video. Put it on TikTok. Oh, post it. Oh, your review of it? Yeah. Oh, we'll see. We'll see about that. There's a lot of movies. I do reviews on it. And I can never edit them or, or post them i know well i i don't know if you that's are what like the podcast is for we yeah. have it's not for the podcast hours it's for tiktok i probably have days months worth of content that's never actually oh everyone made does it online oh yeah 100 yeah. percent. like i filmed so many things that just went nowhere because i just didn't feel it or sometimes i forget about it I'm oh like, yeah i'm like oh my god i forgot i shot this <laughs> Now it's like out of context. There's still this one video that like I need to go back and actually watch because I remember when it happened. It was the most chaotic moment. It was back in 2020. We were all three at the house. We were like having lunch. And so it was like mom and dad are both like attempting to work from home, but we're also having lunch. And we ended up like running around the table. I'm pretty sure dad might have been chasing us. Derek was maybe chasing somebody. It was so chaotic. And like to this day, I'm like, I still feel like I probably should have edited and posted that right? video. Yeah. Like someday I'm going to have to go back and find it and be like, this is where it all began. <laughs> yep. I still, I shoot stuff all the time that doesn't make it into content, you yeah. know? So So when did you start you. with like really honing in on the Gen X stuff? You know, it's natural to me because right. I, I am Gen X. It started like two years ago. I did this like vanilla ice dance and I, I was like, like bitching to the younger kids that they were screwing up the vanilla ice dance because we had a specific way we danced to Ice Ice Baby. And these kids, these dang Gen Zers, were making this new TikTok routine to Ice Ice Baby. And I was like, no, 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 no. You don't recreate a masterpiece. Like, stop right now. And I'm like, this is how you dance to Ice Ice Baby. And then Vanilla Ice saw it. And then he invited me to a concert. And I was up on stage. And then I'm in a TikTok with Vanilla Ice. And and then the more I talked about it, the more I just realized that that was really where my audience is. I talk about other things, too. Um, my kids. And I love rap music and stuff like that. But the Gen X thing is just that's where that's where my main audience where is. Where people relate to you. I didn't realize it started with the the vanilla ice thing because I knew that that had happened. Mm-hmm. And you, so he actually invited you out to a show. Where was that show? It was in Pennsylvania. Was it like the best thing that ever happened to you? Or like it was amazing? it was funny because I don't fly, so I have like flight anxiety. So I was like, well, I'll come to Pennsylvania, but I'm not flying. And he's like, are you insane? And I'm like, partially. You know, we live in Missouri, so I rented an RV, a 32 foot RV. I oh never. My God. I I had never driven an RV in my life and I drove it 22 hours across the country and I picked up six other TikTokers on the way that I had never met before. And we drove to a house up in like the Poconos and stayed there and all became friends and went to the Vanilla Ice concert and then drove back home 22 hours. That is amazing. So, yeah. You, you were actually on stage with the other TikTokers or just you? Yeah. Well, so he had a bunch of us on stage. I mean, he was kind of, he's like, I mean, he's a great guy. He's really partying. So he didn't really care who was up on stage. <laughs> but, uh, you know, but yeah, we were up on stage. We got to meet him and he did a TikTok with me. And so I was watching your videos and I was trying to like all this Gen X stuff. I am a little disappointed that you weren't able to, we weren't able to have mom on with us. Today. Oh, she would love Unfortunately, it. Unfortunately, she's still like feeling a little sick. Um, so she was like, I just can't make it work. But I think we're going to have to have you back so we can do like a total deep dive into the Gen X thing Ugh. because you and mom would have the best time going back and forth about it. Yeah. Because all this stuff, I was like, I've heard stories about this before. Yeah. And but the thing that I was Dad, like, yes, Derek. Are you going to talk, talk about um, when I went to um, the movie theaters with, with dad, go see Abraham or when the other movie play a trailer? Oh, the scary movie? Yeah. You you can tell Kelly really quick if you'd like. How about your turn? I, well, I wasn't there. I don't actually remember that story. Please. Oh, what happened? He left during the trailer? Is that what happened? Oh, did yeah, they show a scary one. trailer a scary during a regular movie? movie? Trailer. Oh, but you're going to take your headphones off while you do it. I'm, I'm going to take yours off because I, I want you to see it. Okay. Um. So he... Well, we actually had this... 
bet that, you know, Oppenheimer and Barbie came out right around the same time. Right. And yeah. I thought Derek would be more interested in Barbie, but he was actually more interested in Oppenheimer. And I, we actually made a video about it. We were at one of her, she was coaching softball and um, we're sitting there at the softball game and I made this video with dad and Derek that I'm like, okay, TikTok, Derek thinks that he's going to be able to stay awake through all of Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. And I think he's wrong. And I like made this whole little video about how Derek was not going to like Oppenheimer, whatever, whatever. And all in all in the comments, because this was also like a month after the movie had actually come out. So all in the comments, everybody was like, oh, Derek, like, because it was he was either going to watch Oppenheimer or he was going to watch Friday Night Smackdown. Yeah. And they're all telling him, oh, buddy, stick to the Smackdown. Like, yeah. You don't want to watch the Smackdown. But he actually that he didn't end up going Friday night. He did end up going to Oppenheimer a different night with dad. And during Oppenheimer, a, a scary movie commercial came on mm -hmm. and dad <laughs> made a video about how Derek left during the uh, commercial the because he was scared of the preview of the okay. um, scary movie. Derek like, and I are the same person. The title. I don't remember what it was. Was it, was the, it conjuring? the conjuring? There sh it. Derek. Oh. Well, I don't remember, buddy. Derek. There should be a law that if you go to see a funny movie, they cannot show a scary movie in the previews. I don't think it's fair to call Oppenheimer a funny movie, though. Well, uh, or, okay, <laughs> I, I haven't seen yeah. it, but, or, like, any any type of, like, stick Please to the genre. The I don't remember the title, Derek. Can you remind me? Give me a hint. Oh, was it The Exorcist? <laughs> he gave me oh. the axe. <laughs> I thought he was doing like the old like DX crotch yeah. chop from the eighties. The the who was who were the, the wrestlers? D Generation X. Yes. Oh, he likes them. Yes. You left during the Exorcist preview because you didn't want to watch it, and then you came back. He did actually give Oppenheimer a pretty good review, and mm -hmm. Dad fell asleep. Derek stayed awake. <laughs> <laughs> Look, in defense of your dad, when you reach a certain age, if you sit still for too long in the dark. You just automatically fall asleep. That's what happens when you get old. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not, I'm going to defend dad on that one. It could be a very boring movie or a very good movie and you could still. <sighs> yeah, it's funny. We've actually gotten our dad into creating content. Oh, and really? When, he, when we started, he would get so irritated by us. He'd be like, it's like having freaking TMZ in my living room. Yep. He was like so not about us recording each other all the time and now fast forward he's been on instagram for our almost two years and he's a big hunter and fisherman and all the things so he's so he's doing his own content posting his hunting uh, and his uh, fishing and he's i dare go hunting and fishing that, that is true i i know somebody likes horror movies and and this very cool his name is do you ever saw this guy on, on TikTok before? Who? Do you remember his name? Yeah, I do. I think it's, it's Danny. Danny. Is it Danny Dorito? Yeah, Danny Dorito. That sounds familiar. He makes videos. He makes a lot of like movie review videos. I think. Yeah, he and he, he does does a lot. Derek he, really likes him. I, I, Big I fan. We really like him. Sometimes he's sneaking out to get Taco Bell one night. Nice. <laughs> nice guy. Kind of funny. Anyway. Danny do Danny do do Willow went to um went to the movies go go see the, the Exorcist mm -hmm. and I, I gotta say he's one br brave man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he is. Yeah. So you have two daughters and a son. Yep. But your son is the oldest. Yes. Okay. He's nineteen. So we're we're the same except for Derek's in the middle of us. Mm -hmm. So your kids sometimes they do participate in the videos. So how do they feel now that you've been? established for a little while and, and mom's on TikTok. Like how, how do they feel about it? I think that they're both like really, really proud and also really completely horrified. Like at the yeah. same time, <laughs> it, it's a double edged sword because I know that they're really proud of me, but I also know that at the same time, it's like, God, our mom is on TikTok. <laughs> like they, they see all of our friends see everything that goes on in our life, but um, they only are in my content when they want to be like right. they, like I, I, they're not forced to do anything. We don't rehearse anything. It's just sometimes I'll be like, do you want to do this TikTok with me? And they'll be like, eh, maybe, no, yes. And then, you know. Now, during COVID, they had no choice. I was so bored. I was <laughs> like, put on this Olaf costume and sing this song. This like, is what we're doing. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. <laughs> so now... <laughs> Yeah, now that it's a job, I don't make them do it. So this doesn't happen as often anymore. <laughs> but, like, when we first started, people would say things on our videos about, 
us being like scripted and like forcing mm-hmm. him and stuff like that and i'm like exploiting him yeah is the well, word and forcing for. like yeah. ma- like forcing and i'm like Isn't derek doesn't do anything he doesn't want to do no unless it's like <laughs> walk to the car because we have to right and i'm like there's there's no forcing derek no. like he like he'll sit on his ass and and it would be written all over his face if it was like he I'm wouldn't be same. looking happy doing stuff and I, you can't script this like he is mm-mm. improv king over here yeah we're not there is there is no scripting like even when we're working with a brand partner or, so, or something I'm like that's like my biggest thing that I have to talk to people I'm like is they try to give you a script and you're like hey like, no we don't we don't do scripts like you're no. like we can do a gist and that's that's what we can do we can get the gist of what you want but we yep. cannot do it word for but word let me do it in my way on yeah, the same like, way if you try to script it it's gonna be bad and, and very editing, unnatural <laughs> yes it's, there's gonna be you know an edit after every bad? other word yeah uh-huh. very choppy you know what else is bad what's bad peacock Got the emphasis on Peacock now. Oh no! What time for your subscription? He, what the Exorcist is on Peacock now? He actually, so he gets fixated on these things, and the Exorcist is one of the things he got fixated on for weeks on this podcast. He was talking about when it comes out and, and worried about it, and having anxiety week, about it. Yep. And every week we're like, Derek, are you going to go see it? He's like, absolutely not. Like he wanted to talk about it, but he was very adamant he was not going to go see it. And then, so I started a nonprofit. And I co-founded it, and we so I, I'm not quite as involved from the planning perspective anymore. But we do still promote it, and when it happens, we you know do everything we can to like help them tell people about the event. So Derek and I went to be on the radio, and we were supposed to be talking about Festibility, the mm-hmm. nonprofit. And next thing you know, on the radio, he wants Derek's to talk about the Exorcist. Up the Exorcist, <laughs> and the whole room is like, "Wait, wait a minute! What? Like, D- how did we get here?" Listen, Derek, we are the same person. That is ex- <laughs> that is exactly something that I would do: is get fixated on it, and then just want to talk about it all the time, but not experience it or see it or anything. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I totally agree. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like you get hyper fixated. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. he certainly does. Same like. Okay, so I feel like we have a lot of Gen X stuff to talk about, but we've already been chitter chattering for a while. Mm-hmm. So I feel like we'll just have to bring you back when mom sure. can be on, right? Because it'll be that much better when we can kind of banter with the two of you. But Derek Kelly Love actually it. has some stuff that we need to talk about because Kelly knows a little bit about wrestling back in the day. Well, I can't wait to hear about that. But but first, but first, you have one more thing you want to talk about before we talk about wrestling. I got to know. Kelly, are you a big Disney fan? So I'm a big Disney princess fan because I raised two little girls who just wanted to watch Disney princess everything. So I think I've seen most of the Disney movies, but most of the ones I've seen were when I was like younger, like Lion King and the Little Mermaid and and stuff like that. Derek was a wow. big fan of Toy Story. Oh, well, that's Pixar, story. right? Mm-hmm. Isn't it? But I think uh, it's, it's Disney, Disney Pixar. Pixar. Think, oh, yeah. I think that is one of the ones that's Disney Pixar. What's your favorite Disney movie? My favorite Disney movie is going to be Body Nemo. Yep. And Toy Story. And so Disney Pixar. Because those are both di- the Toy Cars. Story. Derek loved Cars. Cars as well. And also Disney Princesses like like. Little Mermaid, Aladdin, and Rapunzel's my favorite. Is yeah. Rapunzel your favorite Disney Pixar? Or I mean, yes. Disney Princess movie. One hundred percent. You do love yeah. Frozen too. I do. Let it go. Let it, let it go. go. Oh, six. Can't hold it back anymore. So let I think go. the original let Disney Princess go. movie. When you close, close the door. The story The cold never bothered me anyway. Boom. So anyway, I think of the original (laughs) Disney princess (laughs) movies. Mulan was probably my favorite. Oh, yes. We did love Mulan. But But I do love Tangled as well. That was probably one of them that was super popular when when your girls were little. Yes. Uh, Derek, who is your least favorite villain? Like, who do you hate the most in all Mm. of Disney movies? Um, uh, I think it's going to be Ursula. Yes. Oh, I got to go Cruella. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. Ursula Um, and Cruella. Hans. 
Oh, from Frozen? Oh, yes. That the huh. the betrayal. Redhead. The yeah. betrayal. So nasty and rude. <sighs> Especially at the end. Not to, not to spoil, but at the end when he just... Does what he does. Does what he does. I mm. used to play 101 Dalmatians with my Beanie Babies. And I would put them on my back and crawl around the house like and try to hide puppies. from my mom while she was doing laundry. And I'd have to, I'd like go put a couple over here and then I'd crawl back and grab a couple more, put them on my back and crawl back over. And that was what I would do to entertain myself because yes. I'm older than these two. So when I was like little, mm -hmm. they were well. either not here or too little to be right. playing with me. <laughs> right. But okay. Actually, oh, I well did. Before we get to the wrestling, I did have one other thing I wanted yeah. to talk to you about. You do a lot of Bing kitten Bing. rescuing. I do. I co-founded Smelly Cat Rescue uh, about two years ago, three years ago maybe. I volunteered in animal rescue for 20 plus years now. And one of my best friends... Thank you, I Derek. Know. That's great. Derek also volunteers in Animal Rescue. Yeah, the Humane Society, right? Humane Society, that's correct. Yep, I volunteered there. I walked the dogs there till I was like 9,000 months pregnant once. <laughs> I just remember that summer. But so, yeah, I, smellycatrescue.org is an organization that we, we take the smelliest, stinkiest stray cats, the ones that nobody wants, the ones that have been abandoned or hurt or injured, and we really rehabilitate them and turn them into amazing pets. And so I, I co-founded it, but really uh, Samira, our president, and it runs the whole thing and um, any support you could ever give us is amazing we do a couple things a year uh, as far as like a trivia night and a bingo night but if you just follow smelly cat rescue on any social media you can be kept in the loop of what we're doing and yeah help okay. a great cause i have yeah. to ask yeah smelly yeah. cat rescue is that a nod to friends of course it is yes. yeah and i'm very proud that a, that that a sweet awesome. little gen xer got that 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 the gen z baby the yes. gen z -er got that correlation because sometimes when we say smelly cat rescue they're like why would you name your rescue smelly cat and i'm like have because you not smelly seen friends? cat smelly cat yes, yes. there you go <laughs> What are they feeding you? Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely named after friends. They have a suit us yet. So, so Derek, uh, Kelly's actually met a couple of big time wrestlers. Well, yeah, I have. Well, I can't wait to hear of it before we get. get oh, my gosh. Just another transition. Ruined. Yes. <laughs> Derek likes to kill my transition. Yes. Yeah. We try. Well, so, so, sometimes you, you're doing great. You start talking about what, something what, too soon. What do you think we need to talk about before wrestling again? I get not a big renouncement. He right usually here. can't wait to get to the wrestling. This I know I'm surprised. is the biggest renouncement yet. Okay, All right, what's us. the so renouncement? Be be before I could do the renouncement. <laughs> There's an announcement before the announcement? <laughs> <laughs> Double announcement. Kelly, I got to know what is your favorite villain, Disney villain, and especially you guys as well. Oh, our favorite villain. <sighs> oh. Like oh, favorite, our favorite villain? Favorite that I yeah. love them or hate them or love to hate them. I think m the I love. all of it. I think probably Mother uh, Gothard from uh, Tangled. Mm. Mother Gothel? Yeah, Mother Gothel. Or I think, um, um, I, I don't okay. know for sure if this is Disney, but I think it is, but Yzma. Yzma. Emperor's, Emperor's New Groove. Oh, I don't remember that one. She's purple. She's got the hair. With the eyelashes. Oh, she's oh crazy. Oh, yeah. yes. she's but she's, she's pretty funny, so I like her. Yeah. What about your cat? Oh, my gosh. This is hard, Derek. Do you have an answer? I don't know my is. Oh, but you're going to make Katie go first? Will you go first so I can still think? You. Absolutely not. Oh, we're defer just, to Jack. We're going to throw Jack your feet. Favorite favorite villain? Yeah. Syndrome. Uh, would you count Syndrome from Disney Pixar? The oh, he, he, he oh, counts. Oh, yeah, yeah, count yeah. That? Yeah, Syndrome. He's the sure. blue one, right? No, He's no, no. Orange hair. Oh, He's the got the orange hair. hair. The blue guy's not a villain. Oh, yeah, my bad. I'm sorry. I forgot. Frozone. <laughs> Don't do okay, Frozone don't like that. I know, I know. I apologize. That's my bad. Okay, what about you, Katie? <laughs> oh, man. This is still so hard. Um... She's like Hans. Also Hans. Hans. <laughs> no, I don't. I can't. I don't love him at all. He very much frustrates me. Um, maybe Maleficent. Mm. Wow. Okay. See, I, I like Scar, too. Like, I hate Ooh, Scar. I was going to bring that Scar's up. Scar's good. Ugh. Scar's good. Scar's good. Like, him with the hyenas. Like, I feel like, too, I mean, bad guy. But at the same time, some a little bit misunderstood. Sure. But, okay. Well, my favorite villain from, from Disney one is Scar and the other is from Jungle Book. Mm. Oh. Jungle Book. Jungle Book. The, the, the hunter? No. The no, big no. gorilla? The gorilla. What's his name? It's a tiger. Oh, you're right. It is the tiger. 
Oh, what oh, his name? I'm going to not be upset. I'm going to be upset with myself that I didn't come up with this my, on my own. Jack, we might need an assist over here. Yeah, I'm too old to know what this Shere is. Khan. <laughs> Shere Khan. Shere Khan. That's it. Shere Khan is one of my favorites. And, and the l- last one is Damony goes to Hades. Hades, Hades is good. Really good. That's from a good one. The one with you the know, fire also, hair. Um, yeah. the guy from Aladdin. What's his Jafar. name? Jafar. Jafar. He's a Jafar. pretty good villain. Yeah. Yeah. That was we a love good question, to hate him. Derek. Thank you. You're welcome. Reason I bring up villains. Bring up villains. I get the biggest renouncement oh, right oh, here. Oh, please tell us. Tell us. There's two of them. Oh, my God. Okay. Oh, my God. We still haven't got to the two. double announcement. <laughs> <laughs> Triple okay, announcement. Let's see. One at a time. I will. Ladies and gentlemen, it is official. The new Disney's movie, Disney's 4, will be on Disney+. Plus. Awesome. Wow. That is exciting. Do you know what Descendants is? I do. I haven't seen it, but I know what it is. Yeah, and like the villain's kids. That is very exciting. We do love Descendants. I used to watch Descendants when I was hungover in college. (laughs) Wait, so (laughs) Descendants 4. So that's going to be a new movie. And instead of airing for the first time on Disney Channel, it's It's going to premiere on Disney Plus. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for that update. And what's your other uh, announcement? And there's a lot in me. So, also, another announcement, also, also unofficial, the new Zombies 4 is coming out on Ooh. Disney+. Plus. That's another Disney movie that's kind of in the same... I've never watched the Zombies. It sounds scary. It's not I don't too think scary. It's scary. Yeah. So, it's about I don't think it is. these kids who are zombies, their school shuts down or something like mm-hmm. that, so they have to go to the school with all the normal people Uh non-zombies and so it's about their integration and like becoming friends and one of them starts dating the head cheerleader and whatever a zombie does Mm -hmm. okay i'm invested now the zombies play football and they're like super fast which is odd really cool right zombies should be slow but it's like they have like or maybe maybe it's not just zombies there's zombies there's werewolves maybe the werewolf was isn't there different kind of monsters at zombie the high high school we got zombies we got werewolves we got Alien. I think Alien. it was the werewolves probably who was like super fast and good at football. Okay, yeah. so what's yeah. the last announcement? On Paramount Plus, they are bringing back the awesome show on Nickelodeon called The Fundamentals. We are getting The Fundamentals, the movie on Paramount. Oh, Derek does love Thundermans. I don't know about them either. They're I've like superhero them. movie or superhero family who has to like live a normal life mm, and they have to suppress live their our life the secret yep that's their theme song okay you've been keeping up with some new uh, announcements uh, i yeah. know uh, this one is the last one. Oh my god there's a four. fourth one Derek, four crazy tell us on dinner channel they are gonna going to bring back wizards, wizards of waverly place bingo Woo! wizards river <laughs> place <laughs> On Disney Channel. With, with Selena? With D- David Harry, Selena Gomez, and all the castmates is coming back. So wow. Selena is not going to be a regular. That makes She's sense. She's going to have, like, maybe some appearances. But some David cameos. Henry is going to be a regular, I'm pretty sure. And they're both executive producers. That's nice. Aw- that's exciting. I know. And you know what else? Oh, my gosh. There's more. P- Paramount did release a Carly couple of weeks ago. I love iCarly. Uh, I know. Derek, did you ever watch the iCarly reboot? No. I never did. I don't even think that I, I knew that I'm there was sure. one. Yeah, it's like they're older. I, I'm not sure what it's streaming on, but I don't think I had what it was streaming on, so I w- never watched it. It's Paramount. Is Fun. it on Paramount? Do yeah. we have that? I, like, I don't know, but we're going to sure. yeah, get it. We're get it. <laughs> okay, can, can we talk a little wrestling real quick? So that is all my breaking news. Right. Uh, Thank you for those announcements, buddy. I can't wait to see the Sanders 4 and Zombies 4 on Disney Plus. And I can't wait to see where we replace in the Fundamentals fun movie. You have to set me up on Paramount Plus. Yeah. Understood. Get it done, Jenna. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, get it done, Jenna. <laughs> That's what he also told me about the TikTok ban. He's like, Jenna will fix it. 
Yeah. Can you fix it for me too when yeah. they ban it? <laughs> I'll work on that. Okay. Yeah. I did call our congressperson. I don't think it mattered, but yeah. well, this was the first time, you know, they've wanted to shut TikTok down since it became right. popular. And this is the first time that we got a, a message yeah. from TikTok. The creators did saying, "Call your congressman." I thought, "Oh, crap. This is really gonna happen. I did call, Burn but I, I I don't think Burn it off. made a difference. My call. I mean, good for you for doing it though. Keep fighting the good fight. Yeah, yeah. It is Br- what it bring is. Bring them the fight. Also, you have to work on the, my movie, my movie review. <laughs> Understood. I have a lot of assignments from you. Of course, yeah. It's you all do. I do is work on stuff for you. Mm-hmm. So. Somehow I yeah, well, you've been this. taking some mega time off recently. You need to get back on oh track. Oh, my gosh. Sorry. I went on one <laughs> bachelorette party. <laughs> oh, my Which goodness. Is, we will talk about the bachelorette party tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. Was it your bachelorette party? No, okay. it was a friend Not yet. of mine. But I, I do have some funny stuff to tell you from the bachelorette party, but we'll talk about that tomorrow. But right yeah. now. Right now. Right now. Kelly has some really cool stuff to share with you that well, we saved for last. Well, so am I. <laughs> so, well. I, I, I do get cut rose. No, we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about that <laughs> tomorrow also. That's the weekly wrestling wrap up. But right now, Kelly, I would like to know what wrestlers you've met. So I said it earlier. Yeah. I worked in morning radio. So I've met a lot of wrestlers. Um, I have read. I have met. Let's see. Uh, Mick Foley. I have met wow. Hulk Hogan. Wow. I have met Ric Flair. Woo! 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 I have met, uh, I think a girl named Lita. I've met Trish Stratus. I've met. Oh, wow. Gosh. A lot. It, well, it's, a lot. it's all from like the olden days, though, because, you know, I was in radio 20 years ago. So I'm surprised Derek even knows who it, most of these people are. He's, He's got amazing. DVDs from years and years and years. Like his so, bookshelf uh, upstairs, it's like. 2002, 2003, 2004, and like he's got all the. It's organized by year. He watches all the old stuff. He's very invested. One of the things that I started doing early in my TikTok career for no reason was I have a full Macho Man Randy Savage outfit. It is. Oh wow! It is red <laughs> pleather with like the fringe and the Ooh, cowboy yeah. hat. I don't know why you didn't wear it today. I I was this close. It's very hot. <laughs> I know. Yeah, these ring lights wouldn't help. It's like a sauna yeah. suit. And <laughs> if you go back early in my TikTok. TikTok, you will see several videos in this Macho Man Randy Savage costume that just kept appearing in videos for no reason besides that it was Macho Man. And I liked introducing him to the young TikTokers who didn't know who he was. Right. Well, so. Derek Derek has met Ric Flair, none of the rest of those. But mm-hmm. it was hilarious when he did re- meet Ric Flair. It, it was we got invited to this car shield commercial mm-hmm. and they were yep. doing a commercial shoot with Ric Flair. And then they had Pat Maroon, Pat and Maroon. Ryan O'Reilly. Sure. And so we were at that Centene Ice Ring. Yep. And, of course, there's all these little kids around who are so excited to see these two huge hockey players. Yeah. And these hockey players are just getting so much attention. Sure. All the things. And then we get set up, and it's, like, very elaborate. And we've got all the cameras on Derek. And, you know, we're making a big deal about this this whole shebang with Derek. And there the three of them are. And the two hockey players are fully prepared for their egos to be stroked again. And Derek could not have paid less attention to either of them goes straight for rick flair he's doing the dance he's giving him the woos and you just see both the hockey players kind of like fade out of frame (laughs) yeah well you know what those hockey players probably knew like rick flair is a legend i mean he is he's amazing they handled it totally fine but it was also hilarious because they were just so much hockey attention and then here comes Derek right being in an like, ice rink and don't care about you guys not even a little bit i'm gonna talk to this guy i would have done the same thing Derek. speaking oh, of your wrestling off. attire mm-hmm. did you see uh jason kelsey and his lucha libre mask yes it was amazing <laughs> it's funny because before that happened a few weeks before we had talked about that jason kelsey was maybe going to be retiring this year yeah and Derek predicted he's like hey jason kelsey i think you got a career in wwe oh you know he might he would be great and then next thing you know at the super bowl party he's, he's wearing in his the, lucha libre mask that's crazy like, you know i listened to their podcast and he found that on the floor he did find that <laughs> on the floor at the club at the club ew. And, put and put it on his head ew yes yeah kylie was not very wow. pleased i was just gonna say his <laughs> wife had to be so pissed yeah <laughs> Oh my goodness! That's something. <laughs> yeah, that is something else. Okay, B- before we we um wrap up with Miss Miss Kelly mm-hmm. right here, 
Oh, you left him hanging. <laughs> oh, I didn't know he that wanted a high five. five. I, 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 I thought he was just gesturing towards me. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Kelly, I have two two views I have to say, say to you. Okay. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on <laughs> in wrestling today? Oh, boy. The first one, do you think the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes will finish his story at WrestleMania? Yes, I do. I absolutely do. I, I don't know what his story is. I know that The Rock just beat him up, right? He did. The Rock's not very nice these days. No, he's turned heel and he's amazing at it. Yeah, he's very good at being mean. Yes, I think if I were a wrestler, I would want to be a, secretly be a mean guy. Yeah, well, one of the, our good friends that we've made, his name's Dominic Mysterio, but you might be familiar with his Ray dad, Mysterio. Ray Mysterio. Uh-huh. Yeah, so we met both of them at the same time. And when well, that's we met, funny. I do have the breaking news about that. Okay, tell me the breaking news about Dom. Oh, uh, let's see. This weekend... At WrestleMania, WrestleMania World, Mini Great, Dominic Mysterio will be in the WrestleMania World Mini Great on Sunday. Oh, that's exciting. I'll have to text him. You should. Okay, we'll work on it. But cool. it, when we met them, Dom had just started his career, and that's kind of how Derek and Dom became good friends because when we had – Dom started his career in August 2020. So okay. At that point, we were already on TikTok. We had a pretty good following. And Derek found out that him yep. and Dominic were both born in 1997. And he thought that was the coolest thing. And he's like, that's my brother. We made right. this video about it. He didn't even know at the time when he was getting so excited that they're actually three days apart. Oh, wow. So Dom's birthday is actually it's coming up. It's on Friday. So Dom's birthday is the 5th, and Derek's birthday is the 8th of April. Yep. Where does Dom live, or where was he um, born? They live Southern in San California. Diego. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So San Jose, California. We made this video about Derek and Dom being brothers, and his sister saw it, and his sister responded with a video of Dom. And then a couple months later, we went on this show called The Bump, which is like ESPN for wrestling. Like the uh-huh. ESPYs? Yeah. yeah. Well, no, the ESPYs was the Slammy Oh, Awards. right, right, right. The right, Bump right. is just like their Big date, their oh, weekly Slammy show. Award. Mm-hmm. I, I have another, another breaking news. Okay. I just find out about a Slammy. Slammy Wars is back. Oh, I did hear that they're back. They're coming back. At WrestleMania. That's amazing. That's exciting. So Derek got invited on the bump, and while we were on the bump, Dom, Dominic uh, surprised him. How fun. And so we got to say hello. Yeah, and that was, was cool. 2020. And then fast forward, WWE came back to St. Louis for the first time for the Royal Rumble in January, and Ray and Dom actually came to the bakery that Derek worked at at the time and yep. surprised Derek, and that's, that's amazing. how he got his tickets to Royal Rumble. And ever since, we've been good friends with them. And at the time, Dom was a good guy. And then fast forward, we went to one Monday Night Raw in all of 2022. And it was the one Monday Night Raw that Dominic turned heel. And it was detrimental. <laughs> I'm sure. To our world. Especially if you didn't know it was coming. Yeah. The buildup had been there. But I think so the signs were there. knew that Dom is a good guy at the end of the day. And Derek was very hopeful that he was not actually going to turn on Ray. And it was one of those moments where we, it was it was a somewhat of a learning opportunity where we had to <laughs> learn that, you know, the Dom that we know is a nice guy and the Dom that you watch on TV is playing a character. And sure. that was something that took a while for Derek to uh, accept. But he was actually so kind that he saw the videos of Derek getting upset about his heel turn. Yeah. And he actually called us the next day, FaceTimed with Derek, apologized what a great to guy and told him how sorry he was for upsetting him and he's like you know i'm a good guy at the end of the day like all the things and now it's gotten to the point where he like i don't know how long this heel turn thing was originally gonna last but now he's so good at it right that they like he is the most hated heel in all of wwe no one else gets booed the way dominic gets booed that's and amazing we, like know him personally and he's just so sweet and he literally so calls derek on his birthday like he facetimes derek every the year on, on their years. birthday that's yeah. awesome birthday. and last year when he facetimed um we're talking to him and he's like you know, I was like, Dom, they were booing you so hard on SmackDown last night. And he's like, yeah, I know. 
I got to keep telling myself the booze are my cheers. Sure, and they like, the they are. They do, the his guests I'm doing. his guests booed him at his wedding. He did. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> yeah. That is incredible. Well, they weren't as persistent as the WWE fans. They did end up letting him, letting him give his speech, but they did start off his little speech with booze. That is hilarious. <laughs> and if I were a heel in the WWE, I would want nothing less for my family <laughs> than, right. than to boo me. Yeah, and so it's it's pretty fun. And Speaking of uh, heel turns. Uh oh. Kelly, do you think Lee Mysterio will sign on the dotted line and turn heel on on her father like Dominic did years ago? Do you think Lee Mysterio will turn heel and join with Austin Theory? I don't know. What do you think? Because you're the expert, so I'm going to go with whatever you say. I, I think it's going to happen. What okay. Do you think? I think it's going to happen. <laughs> Good luck. For sure. She has to sign that on that dotted line to even have a WWE contract first. She is in med school. So I don't I don't know that she's going to be going the wrestling route like her brother. But, you know, but yeah, we've gotten to meet their whole family. There's that's cool. We we actually haven't met the mom yet, but um, Derek's FaceTimed with her before. But they have just been so kind. And it really is like I certainly never knew when we started in 2020 that we were going to become such a wrestling entity but like you know you found your middle-aged mom is that your niche like yeah our niche is the wrestling community and it has been just such a fun ride and the way in which they've embraced us and the kindness that we have seen from both the wrestlers themselves and the fans is like yeah and I, I think that that probably has a lot to do with why both of us are so successful because our niches come from authenticity. Right. It comes from something we already genuinely love or talk about or we are a part of. And then that community just welcomes you. And it's like everything falls into place. And when people are asking me, like, how do I become famous on TikTok? How do you? I'm like, it's up to you. It's up to whatever you like. You know, that's your thing. You can't just invent something that you like. So Derek and the wrestling, it's all authentic. It's mwah. Yeah, it's Perfect. hilarious when we Agreed. go to these events sometimes like there will be literally people lining up to say hi. I'm and sure like, we'll bring. I can't wait what's going to happen at, at Philadelphia. Like okay. there's going to be a pack of people. Like, to come. Derek's probably oh my is. God, Derek yes, I can take your picture. As famous as some of the wrestlers <laughs> at this point. We'll we'll like bring friends with us sometimes to the events if we have like extra tickets or like if I'm not able to go, she'll bring a friend or something. And they're just like in awe. They're like, wow, like people really are like lining up to say hi. Yeah, no, pe- people do not line up for me, but th- <laughs> I still have my friends sometimes aren't used to it. Like if they don't go out with me a whole lot and then they go somewhere with me and they're like, oh, my God, we forgot you're famous. Like this is <laughs> this is so annoying. Like, I bet yeah. you get recognized a lot when you're at Target. So not so much Target, but like hockey rinks, right? Right? Because everybody knows that moms. my kids play hockey. Right. So a lot of my content is about that kind of stuff. So, mm-hmm. But, like, yeah, something like Target. Um, I don't think I've ever gone to the schnooks by my house and not gotten recognized. I mean, it's it's every single time. Because, that again, that's my audience. So I know I know where I can, you know, like, blend in and where I can't blend in. For me, it's pretty easy to blend in, um, especially if I'm somewhere like – if I go to like a blues hockey game, like everybody's looking at the ice. So right. nobody's like looking really side to side at each other. Um, but when I went to Black Friday at the mall and we're all facing each other, <laughs> yeah. we, you know, then it then it's easy to get recognized. I but bet you wouldn't get recognized very much at Bass Pro. No. Well, you know what? Let me just tell you some There's of those a lot of Gen X there. Some of those some of those old guys love me. I mean, like they, <laughs> they are loyal to me the way that the women are. I mean, they really are. They just don't they don't express it as much to whereas like a, a, a woman who is in her 50s and sees me in public is like, oh, my God, Kelly Mano, I love you. But like when I, this one guy was like, I love your stuff. And he'd give me like a knuckle <laughs> bump and just walk on. Or, you know, <laughs> one guy bought my Slim Jim once in Quick Trip for me because he loved my content. Do you get it where people will just like stare at you but not say anything? Every single day. And it, I hate it, that. It caused so much social anxiety for me for yes. a long time. I mean, it was – there was a period where I didn't leave the house for like eight months because I wasn't sure – how to handle it because everywhere you go even if somebody doesn't know who I am they recognize me from somewhere because my face has been on their Facebook they've seen videos um the funny thing is I recently like went on a date with a guy and then once I told him what I did for a living he's like hold on I have a saved video of you in my phone and it was like from two years ago when I was like on this like Gen X it was one of my really popular videos right but he's like I had this on my phone and didn't even realize it was you so like people don't always put together hey that's Kelly Mano and I watch her videos but they just see you in public and they go 
and then yeah. it all comes together and then they just stare and, yeah. and it's just a, you feel like a fish in a fishbowl. We had somebody recording us not too long ago. Oh, all the time. Like, I have, it, it was like the most blatant thing. I'm like, yes, say hi. No, like, people don't do that. People send me photos of myself in public all the time. And I don't think that they intend for it to be creepy. But they're like, saw you at Kohl's today. And it's like the worst angle. It's like blurry. I have like seven chins. And I'm like, I would have loved if you just came up and said hi. And yeah. took a selfie with me ra- rather than saying, I saw you this morning. <laughs> like, I was too embarrassed to say hi, but I was not too embarrassed to take a secret photo and send it to you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. All yeah. right, well, we got to wrap this up. So do you want to finish it up with whatever your last question is about to be? Well, this is not the, the last question. <gasps> okay, of course it's not. the last question. But this, this is actually funny, actually. Um, we were on Saturday. It was, it was me and... And m- mom and I, Katie and Ryan, and dad at a church, and and this pastor um says um to say um he said, how many of you are willing to admit that you're a wrestling fan? And, and Derek, I, what did you do? Did you jump I, up? T- <laughs> no, I ended up raising my hand. Did mom and dad and Katie raise their hands? No, oh, I pointed at me. Derek. <laughs> yeah, I said only yes. me. Oh, I think we're all wrestling fans at this point. You've converted us. Yeah. Only me is raising my hand. The one time you go to church, they talk about <laughs> wrestling. <laughs> they talk about wrestling. How's that possible? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know exactly what's going on. I and will. then the pastor asked if we he could get a Ric Flair. And Derek <gasps> gave the most pathetic woo I've ever heard in my what? life. What? That's so disappointing. I was expecting like a woo. Well, I mean, he was in the Lord's house. Like, I get it. You get nervous in there. He said. Woo. Yep. Oh my god. Give me two claps and a Ric Flair. Woo! Woo! Kelly actually <laughs> used to be a soccer coach. I was a soccer coach for a long time. And tell them what you would do with your girls. So I yeah. we, we needed a name for our team and the girls were really young and they weren't sure what they were gonna be named. And I was like, Do you guys know who Ric Flair is? And they're like, No. And so I kind of explained like what an amazing dude he is, and, like how cocky he was. And I would show them old videos of him. And then somebody bought a Ric Flair like bobblehead, or, like a Funko Pop, and it became like our mascot. And then our soccer team was named Flair. And on the side of our sleeve, we had a silhouette of Ric Flair going, woo. And then it evolved into like before every single game, we would do the whole Ric Flair. Like I'm a limousine driving, jet flying, son of a gun. And I had all these like eight and nine year old girls like reciting Ric Flair and their dads were like, you're my hero. Thank you for (laughs) introducing my daughter to to Ric Flair. It's the greatest thing ever. So I just think Rick's one of the biggest personalities of all time and I adore him. So. Well, I just saw Charlie Flair backstage in that makeup room. Yeah, we went backstage at Friday Night SmackDown. We didn't get to say hi to Charlotte, mm-hmm. but we did see her, and Derek, you know, his eyes yeah. got all big around. And yeah. Like, oh, there she I was, is. I was like, hmm, mm-hmm. hi, Charlotte. <laughs> all right, what's your last question, buddy? My last question, do you think Damage Control will be back together? Is that in wrestling? I don't know who Damage Control is. Damage Control is Bailey, Dakota Kai, it and is Sky, okay. and Asuka and Kara Singh. I don't know. I don't know. That's one that I don't know. Don't throw me out, please. Derek would like you to say yes. Yes, of course. Damage control. Yes. Are you crazy? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, Kelly, where can our listeners find you? Um, so at Kelly Mano on all social media, I just started. Uh, I kicked back up the podcast that I had for five years. It's it's basically just a YouTube show now. So that's kind of where I want most people to go is to YouTube and type in at Kelly Mano or the Kelly Mano show. And I've got a weekly show on there. Maybe I'll have you on my show. That would be super fun. And we're going to talk about wrestling. All we time. can talk about wrestling. All wrestling. Yeah, my co-host, one of my guy co-hosts, Hoss, he's a big wrestling fan, so he can talk oh. to you about everything. Well, Perfect. I can't wait. Yep. Well, thanks for having me, you guys. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thanks it's for joining fun. us. It was so fun. So yeah. fun. So fun. All right, peace. Peace. Bye. Peace. Thank you so much to our girl, Kelly Mano, for joining us. We had such a fabulous time chitter-chattering with her. Thank you guys so much for being really here. Cool. If you are new, welcome to our family podcast, Baker's Bantering. Thank you for joining Everybody us. Here. Thank you for listening. We're happy you're here. You can follow us on all the platforms. Follow us on Snapchat. Which, what else should they do, Derek? Share this video. Like and subscribe and share this podcast video. Follow Derek on Baker Banter on Snapchat. Find us on Cameo. 
Check out our merch on BakerBanjo.com, and we will talk to you on Thursday. And don't forget to listen to the Rickley Wrestling Wrap Up later in the week on Thursday. Peace. 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 Peace.